So here we are once again huddled all around our laptops, our portable devices, or if you're feeling feisty, your, your large screen television devices uh, to watch another AEW Dynamite review here on the Mr. Warren Hayes Show. Hello, I'm Mr. Warren Hayes. Uh, back again this week. It is uh, March, what day is it today? March 28th. Uh, March 28, 2024. To talk about uh, last night's Dynamite review, of course, uh, the March 27, uh, 2024 edition that hailed from my hometown of Quebec City uh, and at the uh, Videotron Center, or as the locals will say, Le Centre Videotron. Um, so, yeah, the, so that that's that's what we're going to talk about today. Hope you're, you hope you're going to enjoy it. Uh, you know, you can preemptively like this, you know, hit the little like button and then you like, I, you know, and then you could become like a prognosticator. You can be like, this is going to be good. I feel, I can feel it in my bones, like, and then when you get to the end and you liked it, you're like, hell yeah, maybe I have powers. Maybe I'm an X-Man. Uh, and also subscribe if this is your first time here on the on the channel. And if you're listening to this on your favorite podcast application, hello, cheerio, uh, tip of the day, top of the day, tip, whatever the fuck. This, this is this is one of my all time worst intros. <laughs> Uh, yeah, five star reviews on Apple, uh, five star ratings on Spotify. You know the drill <laughs> by now. Do I have a like a hair hanging here? If you're wa- if you're not watching the audio, my beard's a mess. My beard's a mess. Ever since the 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 operation, like I've you know I you know since I'm I'm convalescing and taking it easy, I don't feel the urge to shave as much. So I've been leaving. I've been leaving it grow out a lot. I but I do I ha, I did trim it, but I think I might be due for another trim. Does that look okay? No, see there's there's this one there's this one beard hair. Where is it? Where is it? Here. I at first I I thought it was a hair hair, but it's not. All right, Warren, Jesus Christ. Um <laughs> The uh, the available uh, the the availability uh, of tickets at the Videotron Center Le Centre Videotron was very. <laughs> I don't know why I say it like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we're gonna. Uh, this is gonna get on rails real soon. I promise. I promise. Uh, stick around to find out just how long it takes me to get this review on rails. Um, the current, the, 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 the available tickets for the, uh, uh, for the show last night, according to WrestleTix were, um, minimal, but, uh, you know, the, the setup was about, I'd say about a third of what, uh, m- maybe a little more than a third, uh, uh of, uh, what the Videotron Center, uh, can, um, can hold overall. I mean, it, it's, it, it was designed to be a big modern facility, uh, to hopefully host an NHL team and that didn't work out. That's a whole other that's a whole other discussion for a whole other time and a whole other podcast, really. Um, but um, nonetheless, according to WrestleTix, as of now, and this I don't think this is the final count yet, um, 4,117 tickets distributed for last night's show, which is uh, pretty good. For the AEW averages recently, I think you know this is this is not a bad uh, this is not a bad house. Um, still a you know it's still a, a big venue. By the way, I was there. I, I I you know I got my ticket and 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 you know it would have been pretty ridiculous of me to not go to an AEW show while they're in my hometown while I've seen AEW shows in Chicago and Milwaukee. In Toronto, in, yeah, Montreal, and they're like 15 minutes away from my house, and I don't go. Yeah, that would have been pretty stupid. Um, but so I was there, um, and um, I, I I was thankful that there was like the 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 4,000 people who were there. Uh, but um, l- like you could feel nonetheless, though, 
you, you, you could, you know, they, they had, of course, full, full sections of the of the arena were, were, were tarped off, you know, on, on the, the hard cam side. Um, but, you know, you, you, you could feel a good atmosphere. I think, I don't know how it came across on TV, but... Uh, the audience overall the, the was really into it. I was I was I was having a good time. I thought it was a very very good dynamite. Spoiler alert. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, so all, all things considered, I think we we ended up with a with a good number, especially considering the following. I myself, moi, I thought that we would never break. 3,000 tickets. I, I was, in my mind, I was saying, if AEW comes to my hometown where AEW has no brand recognition at all, like, don't even kid yourselves. There is no brand recognition when it comes to AEW around here. Um, if they're able to, if we're able to get 3,000 tickets, I think that will be a success, right? Now it's, we, we broke the 4K mark so I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, I would wager, I would wager that probably uh, the 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 higher number count came because um, because of people making the trek from Montreal to Quebec to come see the Dynamite, especially after they announced Shibata Osprey and uh, Strickland Takeshita, which I think are, I think these are ticket movers. I, for for hardcore fans, if I were in Montreal and I was like, oh shit, I could see Will Ospreay versus, uh, I could see Will Ospreay versus um, uh, we can't see Yuri Shibata, like two and a half hours away from where I live. Yeah, hell yeah, I'm doing it. I'm jumping in a car. I'm getting the ride share. I'm taking the train. Don't take the the train is so fucking expensive. I don't know how it is. In Europe, the train is tremendous, right? Uh, I don't know how it is in the United States. Never taking the train in the U.S. But here, the train v- via rail is so incredibly expensive. And you're not really that well seated. It's not a pleasant travel experience. It really is not. You know, and and they do ads all the time. They do ads on social media and stuff. You know, maybe... We Canadians or our East Coasters, us East Coasters, see a lot of these. Um, but uh, th- they do so many of these ads where it's like, kick back, relax, you know, and people are smiling and they're being offered drinks and so on. But it, it is anything but a pleasant experience. Uh, and it doesn't take, it doesn't go really faster than taking your car. Like, it, it you, I, I've never taken the train where I've uh, 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 where I've gained in like a half hour or something like that. Where you're like, yeah, yeah, we don't have to we don't have to deal with traffic, you know? What like because one of the main advantages of taking the train like to, from Quebec City to go to Montreal is to avoid traffic once you hit the island, the island of Montreal, which is you know notoriously stupid and bad. So you're like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll take the, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take the train and I'll avoid the traffic. So sure, you don't have to deal with traffic, which is fine. I can, yeah, like there's that psychological element, which I, I understand you're avoiding, but you just, you're not gaining in time. Like there's no, I, I, I don't see the benefit of the train. So hopefully if any Montrealers came to, to, to town last night to see the show, hopefully you, you know. You didn't take the train. You, you took the bus. You know, the bus is just about as expensive. But they're regular. They're on time. You know, you're somewhat better seated. What were we talking about? Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, I, 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 I have... I know they did a lot of promotion with a local radio station here. Uh, one of the one of their star hosts was in attendance last night. He was front row. Uh, he was front row um, uh, facing the hard cam last night. Uh, you may have seen him because 
A lot of people were chanting his name and he was turning around to react to them. Uh, he was wearing a, a red jersey of our local minor league team, the the hockey, minor league hockey team, the the, the Ramparts, the Ramparts. Um, so there was some promotion that was done there. Um, look, my assessment here is that I'm pleasantly surprised. And, you know, maybe this is a, an indication that they might come back. I hope that... I felt the crowd was good. Uh, they brought some good matches. Uh, I thought Dynamite was very good. Stayed for the Rampage taping. I think Rampage was entirely skippable this week, but, you know, that's whatever. Um, but it was a good time. I, I've i never... That's not true. I was going to say something completely false. I have mostly had tremendous live experiences with AEW. And, and the trend continues. Wait, when was the time you didn't have the, the Milwaukee show? Which was the one that... Uh, wasn't that the one that uh, I'm like, I'm, I, I guess a lot of things have been blocked out in my mind, but I think this, the Milwaukee show that I saw was the one that was main evented by Malachi Black and Brock Anderson. If you want to, right? If you want to remember that one, I think that's the one. Uh, <clears throat> um, my, 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 my greatest memory of that show was how over the, how over Matt Hardy was with people. Like the Hardys in general are just fucking over, right? Anyway, we're moving on here. I, I swear, I can't, I can't keep this on rails. Not a, but unlike the train, which usually stays on rails, but is a miserable experience. See, here's the difference between me and the train right now. The train stays on rails, but it's a miserable experience. Me, we're derailing. We're going back and forth. We're 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 we're, we're tipping over into the ditch. Uh, on occasion, but we're having a good time doing it, right? Um. So yeah. So I. I look. The again. These are not mind-bogglingly fantastic numbers, but uh, you know we're not we're not selling out every venue like WWE does. But this this is a good this is a good one. This is better and. You know, uh, I've seen a lot of talk about, you know, OAW is cold right now. Look at the attendance numbers. And we've talked about this numerous times. But if you look at the numbers and you look at how the pay-per-views are are, are, are acting and, and, and so on and so forth. And the fact that they decided to, to run smaller buildings as well, like the Coca-Cola Coliseum, instead of going to the Air Canada Center. Um, you can you can absolutely tell that uh, you can actually you can see that. Attendance is actually in a better spot than it was months ago. Um, you know, I really believe I'm I'm part of the, the 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 troop, the group that feels believes um, that the creative switch that AEW undertook last year with MJF as world champion. Uh, the the Brochacho stuff, the Adam stuff, and then leading into Timeless Tony and all the the more sports entertaining stuff that they started to do, the more they disenchanted their fans, and a lot of people just walked away where they were like, "Well, this is not what I signed up for," and it's going to take some because attendance did start to fizzle down, and I think not only do I think I know that. It's going to take some time to reconstruct, to rebuild that trust. Um, and I believe that Tony's emphasis on the Continental Classic uh, late last fall and uh, and getting back to matches, restoring great matches that people are excited to see, you know, the, the good old restore the feeling beat. Um, I think that... Uh, I think uh, these are conscious efforts. Uh, th these are conscious efforts made by AEW to bring back their fans. I'm not talking lapsed fans, you know, the or casual, but the fans that were there that signed up for AEW from the get-go under the guise of it being an alternative. They're like, no, look, we're coming, we're going back to what made us great. And then he signs Osprey, he signs Okada, signs Manet. 
like there's a concerted effort to bring people back and this will take time you know i there's not going to be a sudden spike in in in, in attendance all of a sudden that's just like boop out of nowhere same thing goes for ratings but we're talking about butts and seats um there's a difference between that and you know look bringing out trotting out the rock over on 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 the wwe side of things is a tremendous boon it's a tremendous asset like that's outside of the i i there's no one else in pro wrestling anywhere who could generate that kind of spike outside of the rock who is you know the biggest movie star in the world is he, is he is it still him at least he was i mean he's still a huge star regardless you know international movie star Dwayne Johnson coming in sitting down doing his shtick cursing sending the the WWE universe ablaze getting 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 Cody Rhodes to bleed hey that rock Cody Rhodes match at WrestleMania is going to be great isn't it what a great build oh wait hey that that Drew McIntyre CM Punk match at WrestleMania is going to be Tremendous. What a great build. Oh, wait. <laughs> Tipping over towards the ditch again. Are you having a good time? So, those are my thoughts on the attendance. Uh, on the attendance right now. I I'm sure everyone would like it to be in a better place. Uh, Attendance-wise. But, uh, you know, they made the choice. They, they You can see they're starting to make the choice of uh running smaller buildings like they're doing for dynasty and like they're doing for double or nothing because double or nothing 2024 the date was announced yesterday i believe on social media before it hit i was a little i i wasn't super online yesterday um so i think i think it was announced before uh dynamite uh may 26 is when they're uh is when they're doing the old double or nothing and they're sh they're going back to the MGM Grand Garden Arena the uh, site of the inaugural double or nothing back all the way back in 2019 um because the you know the last two um the last two uh, uh it's always been in Vegas essentially right outside of the pandemic era uh double or nothings um I, I think Tony feels like Vegas is double or nothing's home, but we're going but uh they were in that they they were at the T Mobile Arena, an arena that is somewhat larger than uh than the uh NGM Grand Arena. Uh so um again going the AEW had mentioned this, right? I, I can't remember in what context, I, probably Tony on a media call, but they were saying that they were thinking of running smaller venues and i am all for that we've talked about it i think we just talked about it last week uh talking about the coca-cola arena and, and now they're doing it again with the um the, with the grand garden with the mgn grand garden arena um slightly a slightly smaller venue than what they usually run but if you can get that up to capacity it's much more interesting to have a to, to have the vision of a full building than to have a big building that has that's has spotty attendance and whole sections are empty like you can't you can't air that on tv it looks like garbage but if you do that you you, you pull up your you you, you fill up a, a 10 000 11 000 seat arena it looks great and it's good for morale it's good for it's good for the the wrestlers who feel like they're 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 performing in front of a uh, of a full live crowd which they are looks better for you and you know even if it's not you know a big arena I mean, even if it's not the united center a sold out show is a sold out show you can say your show was sold out Did, you know that's and that's something in, in in show business that has always existed it's something that i was confronted with in past past experiences in my life it's like no let's run a smaller venue sell it out because then next time people will buy tickets then we can maybe upgrade people will buy tickets faster and maybe we can sell out something a little bigger next time 
like to me this makes perfect sense you know I, I i i don't have an issue with this especially when you consider that double or nothing last year you remember what a what a, what a uh, uh, um uh, 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 an adventure that was uh to follow the the the, the progression of ticket sales right cuz there was a if memory serves me right and please feel free to correct me if you know you know my my old age brain is coming in the way here um good presale uh the the initial amount of 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 tickets that were sold were very promising but then like pretty much after the 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 opening few days after the presale every just ba it basically stopped there was nothing else happening, right? There was just nothing else going on. Now, um, and, and they had to, uh, they being AEW, they had to uh, like discount tickets really deeply and they had to do these, uh, they had to do, uh, you know, combo packages. Remember all of this? Like it was a, like they worked hard to get in what was like about 10,000 people into uh, the T-Mobile Arena last year. Like they worked their asses off to get people into that into that building, uh, as opposed to this year where it's like, well, uh, I you kind of feel like it's a smarter strategy. How will they be able to to get up to capacity? I don't know. We'll follow that like we usually do here. But uh, uh, AEW pay per views usually perform well. They there's you know they're usually some of the better houses that they have. On their tours during their year, uh, outside, look, excluding Wembley. Okay, Wembley is Wembley Stadium is going is always going to be the exception to the rule. Okay, so whenever we talk about good attendances, best attendances, you know, we have to put the asterisk that excluding Wembley because Wembley is just a Wembley's a thing. It's a, it's its own it's its own self contained universe. You know. Are, are the ticket sales going to be? Are the ticket prices going to be, uh, going to be uh, uh, more accessible? Because that was a problem, if I'm not mistaken, as well, last year. I still maintain, you know, I, you know, because whenever we talk about ticket prices, and I, and I bring it up, that is, yeah, ticket prices are a little more expensive. People, you know, some folks will be like, well, Warren, you keep saying that uh, uh, ticket prices shouldn't be a problem to selling your your show if you're because if your product is hot people will buy them at any price well that's the exactly the, the aw product right now doesn't feel super hot doesn't f have that level of hotness that can justify you you know selling tickets at outrageous prices no nosebleeds at 800 or whatever you know that's you can i can have both opinions i can say the ticket prices are a little high but also in the same breath tell you but they wouldn't have this problem if the product was hot you know i, I still believe that if AEW worked on its creative worked on its and and can and and and, and delivered constantly great matches and felt hot we would not be having this conversation about will the ticket prices to double or nothing be lower this year no one has this conversation when it comes to WrestleMania. You know what I mean? Like no one ever says, hmm, I wonder if the tickets for WrestleMania are going to be a little lower this year because Cody was really hot last year. And no one, tickets for WrestleMania, you, you pay out the ass for them. That's all. You want to see WrestleMania, you're going to pay out the ass for them. And with, with reason, this, this is not a knock. With reason. Because the product is super, super duper hot. The WWE fans are enamored with everything World Wrestling Entertainment is doing these days. They, 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 can't, they can do no wrong. So that's fine. You know, but, but the, like that's it. It's like the product looks, feels hot. So people are like, yeah, and it's WrestleMania. Wrestle, you know, you have a, you have a 30 year old, 40 year old brand that has withstood the test of time and that has grown into a mainstream, well-known name. Like, you know, your grandmother knows what WrestleMania is. Assuming your grandmother doesn't watch pro wrestling, which a lot of grandmothers do. Watch pro wrestling, I mean. Um, so, you know, 
that's it. It's like this conversation doesn't apply to WWE shows. No one is like, oh, the, will the ticket prices be lower? I, you know, I look. We got we got to move on and not just spend our time talking about ticket prices here. We got a show to review. But anyway, double or nothing, May twenty six, MGM Grand Garden Arena. We're back. I'm gonna keep an eye on that. But we'll we'll get through Des we'll get through Dynasty first. I was gonna call it Destiny. Is Destiny a good name for a pay per view? I don't think so. Let's start with the show. Now, of course, there's a lot of things like I since I was there live, uh, all I can talk about is really what I saw and heard live. There's things that happen that probably happen uh, that you guys, gals and non-binary pals saw really well on screen that eluded me or that uh, there were story storyline beats that were being promoted by commentary so you know of course i can't talk on i can only talk about what i saw in the arena which in, in this arena we the first match that was bestowed upon us was will osprey versus katsuri shibata um they started off by airing footage uh from their match from seven years ago which was tremendous what a this is like this is how it should be right this is this is this is how it should be just Calling up your partner, calling up another promotion. I just needed a little bit of footage from their time here. From okay, and you like that's a hell when when Tony Khan talks about how healthy his relationship with New Japan is. I I buy it. I believe it. I believe it. There's too many signs that they have uh, that they have healthy that that, that there is a healthy relationship going on and you know look we we will always see how it turns out once we start getting close to forbidden door time right but as as it stands right now you know a lot of people were a little worried of how the new regime the new, the Hiroshi Tanahashi era of leadership in New Japan was going to uh, affect the relationship with AEW I'd say right now things seem pretty chill Things seem pretty normal. I don't think there's any signs of panic that are needed here. Anyway, after the match, we had uh, after their uh, after uh, airing the footage, they had an absolutely tremendous match. A shocker! Osprey read it, and here's something that I liked here: Will Osprey wrestled like he still had to overcome Shibata. Right? Shibata still came across as the vet the master you know um and osprey kind of you know he, and osprey was working from underneath in this one which was which is interesting considering you know that uh it's will osprey probably the greatest wrestler on planet earth right now but uh yeah i thought that was a fun little story and shabbat got his st stuff in hard hitting uh and, and nice and proper violent um, Osprey looked tremendous, and so did Shibata. Shibata back? Is Shibata back? And what I mean by that is, has is Shibata out of the 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 bubble wrap zone where it's like, oh, let's be careful. You know, we can't. You know, his brain was taken out of his head and put back in. <laughs> can we can we take him out? Have we removed the bubble wrap? Is Katsuyuri Shibata back? Because he's eaten. You know, hidden blades to the noggin, and he and a tiger driver ninety one. Uh, is he back? Because I'm sitting there and I'm going like this, like please don't die, you know, kind of thing. No, this was this, this was a tremendous opener. I love this so much. Uh, I give this a four and a quarter stars. I think that's good. I thought this was great. I thought it was a great match, great opener, and uh, Osprey is excellent as always. But I, what I really appreciated here is how I felt like we were getting Shibata back, like he's getting back into this groove, and it's tremendous. I 
I don't look. I don't know what kind of sauce these guys are on. I don't know what kind of doctors are clearing. <laughs> Why some promotions will be like nope, and others will be you know Danielson and 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 Copeland and Shibata, you know, who all had very serious career ending ending injuries, where they were told no, you'll never be able to do that again, and now they're still doing it and doing they're doing tremendous work. Um, I don't know, or it's the treatments. I look. At some point, someone is going to have to do a deep dive because it's not going to be me because I'm not knowledgeable enough to get into this. But someone is going to have to do a deep dive here to break down how major wrestling promotions have shut down the careers of guys who obviously can still go. And while breaking down to us what what treatments brought, uh, brought them down back down this path, what was done to make them be able to wrestle again? And how risky is it? There's still got to be risk involved. You know what I mean? Like they can't just be getting out there and being like, hell yeah. Hit, you know, Shibata couldn't have be, been like to Osprey. Yeah, hit me in the head. And Osprey's like, fucking fantastic. Let's go, bruv. You know, it's like, he, if anything, well, Osprey had to be like, are you sure? You know, yeah, yeah, drop me on my head with your moves. No, like, like, anyway, but then again, you know, wrestlers are a, they're a special breed. <laughs> the, sometimes common sense. But this was great. This this really, really was great. Four and a quarter stars. I just, I thought this was tremendous. This, this show was tremendous. Uh, and here's a, I'm still not used it's gonna. I think it's gonna take a while, but I'm still not used to seeing Will Osprey weekly on television on 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 American TV wrestling. I'm just not used to it. Will Osprey, you know, in the past couple of years, you know, he's an attraction. You know, it's like, oh, it's an Osprey match. Let's fucking go. You know, and you make time out of your schedule, and you. That's like he's there every week. He's there every week, and if he's not. Doing great matches with Kyle Fletcher and Katsuyori Shibata. Uh, he's having, uh, he's cutting uh, tremendous promos. We have Will Ospreay, the we have Will Osprey on television doing great Will Osprey stuff on a weekly basis. I hope it's not lost on uh, on people. And for me, it's going to take some time to get used to him. I'm still like, wow, this is wild. This is a this is a TV taping I'm, a, I'm sitting at. And, you know, I saw him fight fucking Kenny Omega, you know, a little over, a little less than a year. And, you know, and now he's like, I can't see your Shibata on a TV taping. It's wild. like, it's wild. It's wild to me. Anyway, uh, let's keep on moving. We've got a tremendous video package for Brian Danielson uh, following this up I, I saw some discussion and I wasn't not involved but I no I, I observed a lot of discussion regarding uh, people saying there were too many video packages you know, I know the great fear of the video package in WWE style you know where they have to explain everything in a video package they have to recap what happened Four minutes ago in a video package. They have to break down the last week's stuff in a video package. You always have to get video packages because you're too dumb to understand things. Um, I'll tell you one thing. I'll, I'll tell you that I thought all of these video packages that they did tonight, they were all tremendous. And they all established character, motive, build, all things that you'd get out of a promo ultimately. As someone who was watching, who was watching live in the arena, I appreciated these little video packages because then you don't have Kaneski Takeshita and Don Callis coming out to cut a promo for later on in the evening. You don't have Swerve Strickland coming out to cut a promo for the rest of the evening. You don't have uh, um, Danielson doing a response back. You don't. You, I, I I thought the flow of all of this was much better. I, sitting there live last night 
everything that happened in the ring were fights. And I thought the pacing was great. And the video packages, of course, ensure this pacing is maintained. Because no one's going long, no, you know, nothing's being goofy, you're not doing the entrance. And, you know, it's just, you keep your show streamlined. I didn't mind them. And I didn't mind these kinds of video packages where I think, I find, they are very well done. And they're not just hammering home, uh, they're, they're not just hammering home the same things over and over again. And they're not done awkwardly with the, you know, the weird WWE cadence and whatnot. They all feel natural. They all feel like little sports vignettes, you know. I thought the, you know, the Don Callis can escape to catch the hyping one was tremendous. I thought it was great. Uh, Swerves was was good too. This Danielson one, I thought it was outstanding. Outstanding. We're getting back, pulling back out, uh, pulling back uh, footage from New Japan once again. You know, and Ring of Honor, of course, and. And I like how nothing was, n here's, nothing was mentioned of the WWE run. Like nothing. Like it's like he was bound to be an international superstar, but then his career was taken from him. <laughs> what? Wait, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say his career was taken from him because of the injury or because WWE had him wrestle had him tone down his wrestling style and had him wrestle their style. You know, you know what I mean? What did that? Um, it would have been really ballsy. I, I, it would have been really ballsy and kind of cool for for AEW to be like, yeah, and he went to WWE and uh, and they uh, shut him down and said he would never wrestle again. Like, would have been fine. That would have been absolutely okay. You know. Especially considering, you know, you know, anyway, I don't, I'm not, I'm not getting into the periphery of stuff here. Try, do try to stay on rails a little bit more and at least, a, at least for, you know, a short distance. I just think it would have been really ballsy for AEW to mention a WWE because look, here's the thing, like, you know, I, I, I've again, talked about this before, but it's been a while. You know, it's it's weird. I find it weird when people say, oh, he, she's a WWE guy, gal. Uh, now they're in AEW and it's all WWE guys, all former WWE guys. WWE was the only game in town for the better part of two decades, right? So there's inevitably going to be, inevitably, you're... When you're recruiting, you know, yes, you can, yes, it's important that you invest in the future and that you build new stars, but new stars will only take you so far. You need established acts, you need people who are solid, that are good wrestlers, good performers, you need those people as well, you know, a lot of them that, that you're just going to pull, that you, there's just a lot of them you're going to pull that are former WWE or who left WWE to do something because it was the only game in town for two decades. So what do you want from me? You know, it's like, yes. Yes, yes. Some of them are a little more shocking. Yes, you know, John Moxley when he was, because John Moxley immediately left to go to AEW, you know, and Adam Copeland when he showed up, I think that was a big deal. Mercedes is a big deal as well. Like I understand the the the, the logic of it, but it's still going to be a thing, you know. Anyway, anyway, packages, video packages. Yeah, it didn't bother me, especially live. I I, I think it's the best way to go instead of having you know backstage segments and and uh, long in ring promos. This rule, like I I have no complaints. And if it's just going to recap a little bit, add a little more heat to the main event, that's fine. You know, we're not doing pointless, you know, things where it's like, oh, last week, Maxine Dupree tried to do the worm. Like, who cares? <laughs> You're doing video packages for the main event of your show. I think that's fine. I think that's absolutely fine. You're doing a video package where, you know, still putting Adam Copeland over for winning the TBS title and he's still bloodied and bruised and... You know, and he's talking about how it was great that the Toronto audience was 
singing his theme, you know, it's like, and it was, you know, let, let's talk about this a little more. Let's put that over. Yes. Yes. It's the kind of thing AEW should do more of, you know, put over their big, their, their, their organic successes like this. Um, the Bucks are backstage being interviewed by Renee. They, uh, they, 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 they put over their match for later on with Private Party. Harkening back to their history with Private Party, they even did a, they did a little video montage of that as well, showing the history. And I mean, look, again, this is something that happened five years ago. I, I'm okay with them rehashing highlights. It's not as if it happened last week. It's like Private Party got the big win. Will they be able to repeat tonight? Oh, yeah. And then, wasn't it then soon thereafter that we got Kazuchika Okada arriving at the arena in a Ferrari? And I, I, I laughed. I laughed. I, I, when I thought about when, when it all, but because during the, 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 I'll just clear this out of the way right now. During the match with the Bucks, right? To, you know, Okada's scene with the belt, right? Looking at a, t uh, at a screen going, yes, yes, ha, 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 you know, kind of thing. And I can't help but find it extremely funny that they flew Okada up to Canada, up to our little neck of the woods here. They flew him all the way up here, okay? Uh, rented a Ferrari and, have him, and had him just to have Okada step out of the car and then do one of these at the screen. Priceless gold, and yes, in case you're wondering, he was on location with the Ferrari. I yeah, I recognize the the he was at the arena. Then there's a there's a bus stop right there, and then there was the big bus stop in the background. That's where he was. So he was there. This wasn't pre tape So they flew him in for that, and then I was like, oh shit, is Okada gonna come out? No, nope, nothing. No, no Kazuchika, no, no live in the flesh Kazuchika Okada. He was only on screen. That fly him in, and they rent a Ferrari. That's funny to me. It's just funny. Um. Anyway, that leads us to the AEW World Tag Team Tournament quarterfinal match, where the Young Bucks defeated Private Party. I again thought this match was very good. I thought. Uh, Look, the, the falcon arrow off the barricade to the floor was just tremendous. That, the whole audience was up out of their seat for that one. That was a great spot, great pop. I thought this was fast, well done, a, a great final stretch, fun near falls. Even though the Bucks won with the EVP trigger, that was a little messy, a lot messy. You know, which, ah, that's, that's a disaster. You know, and private party do more bang for your buck as well. You know, I'm like, okay, all right, this is fun. I'm enjoying this. I gave it three and three quarter stars. I think the finish, the, like the final, not not just the EVP trigger. There's a couple of things there towards the end. Where I'm like, uh, uh, took me out of it a little bit, a little bit. But I thought I still thought this was a very good, tremendous match. And I'm not a big private party fan. I'm not, I, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things about private party that doesn't connect. I, uh, you know, I, I think they're, I think the gimmick's obnoxious. It doesn't speak to me. Like, it's not for me, right? But I, I think it's obnoxious. And I think they're mid. I think they're a very mid tag team. Everyone, you know, we, myself included, because I was not familiar with their indie work. So my real first exposure to them was, in the quarterfinal match, right? Last uh, of the original, no, not the quarterfinal match, the, the first match, the first match of the fucking tournament for the inaugural uh, AEW tag team title. And, um, you know, like everyone, I think, was like, holy shit, this team is great, you know? And it turned out that they're, they're kind of sloppy and they're very mid and... Uh, they're, they do great high spots, but there's there's no there's no tissue that connects. You know, there's there's no flow to their matches. Uh, I don't like again. I I don't think they're as great a tag team. I, I I think soon thereafter, after them defeating the Bucks, um, 
them uh, um, uh, 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 upsetting the Bucks in the tournament five years ago, I think a lot of us sort of started to see that. Oh wait, these guys aren't these guys aren't so great, and I don't think they've really recovered. And now they come into this match, they look great. So all I can sit here and say, like, the, what's the connective tissue here? What's what's the what's the through line between their two great matches that I think they have had in in, in AEW? Well, it's the Bucks. So you're wrestling one of the greatest tag teams of all time, and you're and you have a a great match. Okay, well there you go. I you you wrestle any other team and it's sort of it sort of flounders. You're kind of like. Eh. All right, not bad, sure, pretty good, not good. It's always in that vicinity. I, look, I, I I don't have a problem with par private party not getting the win here. I know for some reason a lot of people said, oh, it should be private party. No, it should be the Bucks. The Bucks should win this fucking tournament. BCC, my prediction was Blackpool Combat Club. Uh, facing FTR in the finals, right? I felt that that's what they were going for, but we're not doing that right now, apparently. Uh, so it's the but like who? Else? It's going to be the Bucks with the new elite being crowned the dynasty. Kazuchika Okada has gold. The Bucks have gold. Hello, this shit books itself. And FTR, I think FTR need this. I think. We, you know, we talk. Uh, we talked about it recently as well. You know, I think FTR are on a bit of a uh, of, of a rehabilitation tour. You know, to to the to a degree that they're getting back in there. They're doing great matches. They're keeping it simple. They're keeping their their promo simple. There's no more CM Punk. There's no more Dax podcast. There's no more weird tweeting. Sure, you know, Cash pulled a gun on a dude, but <laughs> but you know. He didn't pull it. He flashed a gun. Okay, I'm going to use it. Allegedly. The other thing. Um, the, uh, so, you know, like, I think that they've, I, I've i gotten back into a groove where I'm, I'm I, I feel excited about watching FTR matches again. Where for a time I was like, ah, oh, guys, it's enough. They, you know, we're, let's just move on kind of thing. So, the Bucks are going to win this tournament. The, 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 it has to be the Bucks. That's my official prediction. It has to be the Bucks. But then again, here I am saying, well, the Bucks have to beat Sting and Darby Allen. So what do I know? Then we get the Don Callis video package about uh, Takeshita that I spoke about a little earlier. Mercedes Monet is shown arriving at the building in a, in a, in a big car. And she steps out, so uh, so we go to commercial. <laughs> when we come back, Tony Tony Hawk is with Darby Allen. I did not realize that Darby was supposed to climb uh, Mount Everest for charity. For for Tony Hawk's charity. So I guess it, it, it's a double bummer that he got injured. But this is, you know, it's a nice little... Uh, it's a nice little uh, make do, you know, to, to promote the charity on AEW. And I'm like, okay, cool. That's actually pretty fun. Yeah, it's you know Tony Tony Hawk, you know, saying how, um, uh, saying how uh, 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 skate parks were important for him, you know, you know for to him help him, uh, you know, find purpose, find a sense of community, find some weed. He didn't say the weed part. <laughs> God damn you. Come on, y'all know what, what happens at skate parks. What are we doing here? No, but nonetheless, you know, it is it is a you know, I, I I'm joking because I you know I do I, I do believe in the uh in, in the um uh the impact that's uh the positive impact that skate parks can have uh on the youths. I really do. So uh, you know the the, the a good little charity that 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 was nice. That, the, uh, you know if 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 Darby isn't going to be climbing Mount Everest to build a skate park at the top, I guess I don't know. That'd be pretty wild. That'd be pretty. 
going off rails again. Um, no, but it was nice. A good little, fine little video package again. But I'm like, okay. And then Tony Hawk doing moves off of Darby's broken foot. Rene Paquette uh, is backstage with Hook and Chris Jericho. And um, basically, Jericho says, listen, I'm going to be your manager. <laughs> That's, you know, if you want it, it's yours. I'll be your, I'll be your manager. And then Hook says he appreciates it. And uh, of course, he'll accept the, the advice. But he, you're Chris Jericho, and I know who you are. And I, I know who you are. And I'm sitting there, and I'm cracking up laughing. Because I know what he's meant to say, what, what they're meaning to do here. <coughs> Excuse me. Hook is basically saying, right? I, I can only trust you as far as I can throw you, Chris Jericho, because you have a tendency to, you know, to turn on people. So that's what he's saying. Like, I know who you are. But the way he delivered it, he said, you're Chris Jericho. I know who you are. There was no inflection. There was no little spice to the line to where you would have gone. But you're Chris Jericho, and I know who you are. You know, kind of thing where he just Hook delivers the line so flatly, where it's like, like he's actually saying, "Hey, you're Chris Jericho. I know who you are." <laughs> it was just, I, you know, and I was just cracking up. I thought that was the funniest thing. I thought that was real, real funny. Is it just me? It could be just me. But anyway, so look, if Jericho wants to take a little breaky break from in-ring performing and uh, do the manager thing, could do worse. Again, I keep saying, the, the thing with Chris Jericho is that he gets TV time. And if you're, if you're affiliated with him, if you're up against him, if you're whatever, you're in a program with them in any way, shape, or form, you're going to get that TV time too. Like Hook has been on television every week ever since he started up this thing with Jericho. He's been on television every week. And that's how he's going to improve. That's how he's going to get better, more comfortable in front of the camera. They're going to give him tips on how to deliver lines. You know, things that don't come natural to him because, you know, he's a... He, he, you know, he's a, a, a judo uh, lacrosse player. So, it's, you know, he's not an actor. I just saw the hair again. I can't, I can't seem to get it. I'm sorry. I'm obsessive with it. Um, TBS title number one contendership four-way match. Willow Nightingale defeated Chris Statlander, Anna Jay, and Sky Blue. Again, I thought this was good. I thought this was very good. I have no, no qualms about this match. I thought everyone performed well. And, you know, I'm not a super fan of four-ways, but I think everyone looked good here. Man, people really like Chris Statlander. People, I'm not saying that shockingly, but maybe a little to a degree. I'm like, she gets really good reactions, and she got great reactions Last night, when she do stuff, she come when she came out. When she do stuff, people really like Chris Statlander. But you know, she's she she's she's a power wrestler. Yeah, since her injury, she's she stopped using a lot of her jumping aerial offense. She's not that she's completely uh, exited out, but she's she's converted to uh, to a more ground based approach, which is good because both her knees. Are completely shot so um and i think it's working out for her and i think the audience is picking up on it and i think she's a natural fit for it as well she's doing stuff that a lot of women in the division don't necessarily do because there aren't any there aren't many powerhouses there's willow there's nyla there's who else is perceived as a powerhouse wrestler in 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 the aw women's division a lot of them are you know uh, jamie i guess jamie hater that's about it, you know. The rest are all nimble. They all do. They 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 they, they all take take to the air at some point. Like you want that kind of variety too, and I think it's working for Statlander. Anna Jay looked good as well in this one. Um, she's back in her Zatanna gear. 
I, it seems that I, it's, it's, it's been a while since I've seen Anna Jay. I don't know if this was a new thing or not, but good for her. Uh, and Sky Blue, Sky Blue, man, might be turning a page on Sky Blue. Might be, might be, might be turning the corner here. You know, because I, 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 you know, I didn't. I, last year, I thought she was uh, tedious and boring, and uh, I didn't think she was very good. This in this match here, not only did I think she was pretty good, she ate shit. Like she ate complete shit throughout the entire match and um, bumping for everyone. She, she's like, you know, the, she, that, that's, she's the bumper for the division. Like she, she ate so many big bumps here that not, neither of the other three ladies took as big, you know, I thought I, 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 Look, is it the is it the 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 switch of role? You know, where now she's a spooky girl, uh, spooky goth girl with uh, her pal pal Julia. Uh, that's that's reawakening something. I feel I feel she looks motivated. I feel uh, I feel she's she's working harder. She doesn't come across as, as sloppy. I think this is something that might be suiting her. Look. I'm not suddenly saying that all of a sudden she's, you know, fucking Bruno San Martino, you know, and the you know, greatest one of the greatest wrestlers that 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 ever existed, but I I think there's a, there's a definite improvement. I I've noticed it over the past few matches that she's had and it sort of struck me last night. I was just like, "Jesus, she's really working hard." And there was a whole bit too when they were do I think they, they might have been doing they might be flipping camera there was a time where they were paired off towards the start of Early in the match, anyway, they were paired off, and Sky was working really hard, and and I was like, does she know the camera's not on her right now? <laughs> you know, it's like it was tremendous. It was really good. It was good, good, good. They tease Willow versus Chris, you know, which is something that you know probably is inevitable. Willow wins with the uh, babe with the power bomb on Anna J. After the match, Julia Hart shows up. Plasters Nightingale with the TBS title. This sets up the match for Dynasty as well. So we have that match that's announced, confirmed, booked for the pay-per-view. And uh, Mercedes Monet, who was out, I forgot to mention. She came out to some good reactions from the crowd. The, 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 the Quebec City faithful were very excited to see Double M, Marcus Mathers. <laughs> the come to the uh, come to the ring and uh, and and do the ring. So she did ringside commentary. Uh, so of course I have no idea how it went. I don't know how she sounded. I don't know how well, how it went. But she came out to a big reaction. So so at so she stares down Julia Hart after the match. So so we've got Mercedes Monet in the TBS title environment, which. I kind of dig. I think it's good. You give her something to do. Meanwhile, you're doing whatever the hell you're doing. You know, you keep doing your thing with 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 Tony Tony Timeless and uh, whoever they're lining up as a contender. But right now, like the 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 the, the TBS title uh, solar system is very good. I find it's dynamic. There's stuff going on. There's stories and. Speaking of stories, Statlander loses again. Willow wins, Statlander loses. This has been the story for weeks now. Where Statlander just can't seem to get a win. Can't seem to get a one on top of, 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 of Nightingale. Or, you know, Willow's been racking up the matches and uh, the wins. Excuse me. I'm, I'll get this right. And, you know, meanwhile, Stokely is trying to get Statlander to cheat. He's like, you know, giving her chains and international objects and whatnot and i think this is going to be the catalyst this is it that this is where it's going to be here like at some point chris is going to cheat she's going to get a win and this is going to start creating friction between her and willow i don't necessarily think she's going to outright turn on willow but it's going to create some friction and stokely of course is going to go with the she's going to go with statliner because he doesn't give a fuck he's, 
you know, he knows wins a, a win equals a pay a bigger payday. So what do you think he's gonna do? Um, and it, 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 look, it's when people tell me there's no stories in the, in in the women's division. There's no you know outside of the world title situation. Then everyone is always doing these random matches. Look at what happened in this in this match in this multi women match. You got and for the past few weeks. And I've said it here as well. You keep having these stories told as we keep moving forward. And this story is there. But you have to be paying attention to see it. Because it's not, it's not being driven down your throat with uh, uh, video packages every week. So you have to pay attention. So you have a story for the TBS title, right? Which is julia and, and and willow at this point with a little mercedes money sprinkled on top then you have willow and and statlander which is happening on the side and then you have well timeless tony right now is still embroiled with uh Perazzo, and now she's got Th thunder rosa on her heels I, like there's all sorts of stuff going on there's stories brewing everywhere and there's even Tension between Diana Perazzo and Thunder Rosa, right? Remember that? Oh, but 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 there's no stories being told in the women's division. I'm I I I hear often. You're just not paying attention. Or you want someone to read a book out to you, you know. Anyway, uh a good little match. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. By the way, just um as a as a footnote since we're talking about the women's division here right now um tony timeless tony came out during the rampage tapings you know with mariah may and uh mariah may had a match so tony came and uh, uh, tony storm timeless tony jesus fucking christ warren timeless tony uh, came out and uh, and 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 cut an in-ring promo, and the audience, the Quebecois audience, was not excited about this. And uh, I'll be curious to see how it comes out on Rampage. But there were very pronounced "on s'en calisse" chants, which is a Quebecois uh, expression, which basically means is who, which basically means who gives a fuck. Or we don't fucking care if you prefer. A little harsh, but it was it was pretty loud. We'll see what happens there. Speaking of rampage, we have Dustin Rhodes in an interview backstage. Butcher arrives to challenge him to a fight for rampage. You know, Dustin says, "You know, I'm 55. I still have the passion. I want to go." So Butcher's like, "All right, let's go then." Um, spoiler alert: This week's rampage is. 100% skippable. Just as much as I thought that, you know, I was like, oh, Dustin and Butcher, this will be a nice, you know, a good old brawl. Can mm -hmm. 100% skip it. I'm not, not giving any spoilers, so, but. Then we get uh, footage of Tony Storm with the Turner Classics movie uh, guy. I don't remember his name. Um, you know, it's interesting to me. The last time I saw them do Tony Storm with the uh, Turner Classics movies, Turner Classic movies guy, was when they were in Montreal. And I remember saying right here, and uh, you know, when I saw the show and I came back and I did the review, I was like, no one knew who this guy was. You know, like. No one in no one in that arena was like, oh hey, it's that. And it, so they do it again in another arena where no one knows who he is. You know, where people are like, what the who is this guy? What, what what's going on? Like no one knows what Turner Classic Movies is here in town. Like no one. We're not gonna pretend that this like this didn't go over. So it's funny they do it in two markets where TCM is just like completely oblivious to. To to the market itself. Then we have uh, the other AEW World Tag Team 
title tournament quarterfinal match where the best friends, why did my voice do that, defeated the Undisputed Kingdom. Uh, fun little match. I thought this was the weakest of the show, but still, I thought it was fun. I thought it was pretty good. So, you know, when, the, when this is the bar, it's pretty good. You know, I think cage match went a little rough on it. 5.79. I think that's rough. There were some good spots. It was fun. People chanting at Mike Bennett in French. And he was going, uh, he was going and looking at them and saying, I don't know what you're saying, you know. It was fun. There's some uh, dick punching and some low blows and all that stuff. Uh, Orange Cassidy gets the win. It was fine. Fun. You know, a good little crowd pleaser. After the match, the Young Bucks show up to make sure we understand that they're squaring up against the best friends next week in the, um, the semifinals, right? We're already there. We have Kyle O'Reilly continuing down his road of earnest, well-spoken, calm interviews. Still feels uh, good about doing it alone, despite the fact that uh, the kingdom came to celebrate with him after he beat Brian Keith. I still think this is going for Kyle O'Reilly versus uh, Roderick Strong. Back from commercial, we get the Adam Copeland uh, video package that we talked about. And that leads us to our world uh, title number one contendership match where Swerve Strickland defeated Kaneske Takeshita. He is going to be facing Samoan Joseph at the uh, at the Dynasty pay-per-view. This match rocked! Just a, a tremendous... Just some tremendous action from top to bottom from both guys who just brought it. They just brought it. They just were like, all right, let's go. We're, ha- we're going to have a big-ass match. They went hard on each other. Went really, really brutal on each other. Man, Takeshita is special, you know, and I understand the role that he's playing in right now, but, yeah, you know, I, and, and I would be hard-pressed to not believe that, um, I would be hard-pressed to not believe that Tony Khan doesn't understand how special Takeshita is. I think Tony Khan knows what he has. But for some reason, he feels... Look, we can go back to last year and when Takeshita was popping up on AEW before he got signed and and how, how he got over with his work. And I think this is... Like, that's his strength. I think... It, I still think babyface Kanesuke Takeshita in AEW is a layup. You let the guy have matches, you, and he, and I think you have yourself a, a, a superstar. I think it's a layup, but we're still treading on water. We're we're still treading. We're being touch and go with it. Sort of, but you know, I also see the, the story panning out where, you know, eventually Takeshita, you know, he's not winning matches. He's aligned with Don Callis, but he's losing the big ones. He's like, no, he, you're not doing me any good. And then he turns on Callus, and Callus gets mad. And then we have a whole feud. And why not Kyle Fletcher versus Kaneske Takeshita? I mean, I'd be down for that. Um, so, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, you can see what this, well, how this is going to eventually turn out. But right now, you know, you're like, what is that? And, uh, and Swerve Strickland, I'm not taking it away with anything from him. He's just a star. And you see him live. You know, he's got big room energy. He's he's got the charisma. He's got the presence. He understands how to perform. He he's athletic. I I've been harping on Swerve for a while. You all know this, but you know it, it's nice to see that we're getting closer to the to the target, right? And this turned into a match that I had a blast wa- blast watching. There was that evil looking stomp. That Strickland did on Takeshita on the apron. Uh, I didn't know how it it looked on camera, but from our vantage point, oh, it looks so nasty. It looked like he landed on his face and just a uh, just a mess. Um, the poison run into the blue thunder bomb by Takeshita was outrageous. It ruled. It ruled. Just a great main event. Uh, Swerve does the uh, the top rope stomp and. Kineske t- kicks out, so he has to finish him off with the JML, the JML driver. Not the finisher this week. 
JML driver for the win. Um, look, they're doing everything right, right with Swerve. And this was the good spot. Super over in the crowd. Uh, everyone loves Swerve. That's, that, that's just how it is. So the championship chase is been has been very good then you know joe pops up on screen and was like yeah come out joe but he didn't uh and he expresses his discontent at this uh at this situation he did not want to face swerve now swerve is the number one contender the rating the rankings now have been released by tony khan to confirm that you know you look at let me pull them up here i'm not prepared because i i just i wasn't planning on Talking about the AEW rankings, but, uh, you know, you take a look at, you take a look at these singles champions, Samoa Joe, Adam Copeland, Roderick Strong, Kazuchika Okada, like you look at the pictures there, and like, holy shit, and then you, the contenders, Swerve, or, uh, Orange Cassidy, Mox, Will Ospreay, Danielson. I mean, this is, it's as close to a dream fed that we'll have seen in our, in our lifetime. Do you realize, like when you look at it, when it's presented to you right here, you're like, Jesus, what a promotion. It's so incredibly badass. There you go. Look. That's uh that's my final thoughts there. My final thoughts on a very good AW Dynamite, which I you know, I had a tremendous time uh, being there live, but uh, because the show was so good. It was a, it was a really really good episode of Dynamite. I didn't have a problem with the video packages. There was there was virtually no nonsense everyone everyone brought their 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 working boots i enjoyed this tremendously and there you go i hope you did too but i i mostly hope you enjoyed this review that's what that's what i'm here for uh if you did leave a like if you didn't don't if you want more out of this uh, this, this, this face right here, well, subscribe to the Mr. Warren Hayes channel on youtube.com slash Mr. Warren Hayes or on your favorite podcast application. I'm there as well. Thank you all once again for joining me today and I'll see you next time.